This is Cape Henlopen State Park, and we're at the campground. I'm going to take you around. First, we're going to pass through the walk-in campground area and take the middle trail, mm -hmm. and then we're going to go to past the Sanders. bunkers and head out to the moshes. There's a middle trail here we're going on. No, it's a middle trail. I thought there was no trail. The trail I thought was here. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I don't want to disturb people's tents. <laughs> thank you. No, no, there's a trail the kids showed me, okay? It's okay, Lucy. Everybody's friendly. Most of the people are friendly. No, I know where we're going. This is the trail. We go right. Now to the right, you'll notice a bunker buried under the sand for the Fort Miles Battery. They, I think they stored the bombs there. Don't even try to get in there. They're sealed shut. Now to the right is the campground area, and if you take this turn to the right, you'll loop around the campground, and you'll end up at the entrance of the campground. Now if you take that turn to the right, you'll go up about 10 feet, and you'll see on the left side a lot of sand that was placed there during World War II to bury all the bunkers. It's a really nice place to go walk around in fluffy sand, very dry, and see the sunset. You'll know you're in the right place if you see a chimney that's about 15-20 feet high. It's nice to catch that chimney in the background with a sunset. Now look closely to the right here. You'll notice that there's little trails going upward. That's also the sandy area that I'm talking about. If you go to the end of this road and then go right, look for a trail somewhere in there and you'll end up closer to that chimney that I'm talking about. The red chimney. Make sure you bring your camera and capture that sunset. It's worth it. Now we're coming up on our turn, our left turn, to head into the moshes. This is going to be a straight shot, straight through the moshes, to get to another main trail. That's also a road. Now let me take a moment to tell you about riding a scooter versus riding a bicycle. Now I'm riding a scooter that does have a suspension. It doesn't have dampening shocks, but it does have that suspension. Dampeners are needed if you're going to be going over 20 miles an hour and hitting roots, bumps. Bumps that are like 2 inches or an inch. You need dampening when going over 20 miles an hour. Now I'm riding on 10 inch wheels and <laughs> there is a difference between 26 inch wheels. Huge difference. Oh yeah, this is the second opening of the mosh. And that little bridge you see there, there's a little stream underneath that. It's a good place to stop and look around. Probably be good to get a sunset here as well. Now where was I? Bicycle versus scooter. Now I have found that a 26 inch wheeled bicycle is more comfortable even if it doesn't have suspension versus one a scooter with suspension. But I just discovered that if you stand on tippy toes when hitting bumps and bend your knees, your calf muscle does an excellent job of absorbing shock, much better than sitting down on a bicycle. So it makes for a good exercise standing on your tippy toes like a ballerina on this thing. Just getting that, getting used to that, rather than standing flat-footed. Really, really tremendous difference on your back. It doesn't, like if I'm standing flat-footed, my eyes are rattling around. Like when you're sitting on a motorcycle going down the highway, eyes rattling around. So when you're standing on your tippy toes, not that high, just a little bit, with knees bent, the eyes don't rattle. And what I mean by eyes rattling around is that the, the vibration, and then your eyes are rattling, you just like a... You have to experience it to understand it. Alright, now we're approaching the beach. A nice spot to go where it's a little high up where you walk down a trail to get to the beach. It's not that difficult. Also a great place to catch the sun rise at this location. And now we're going to take a right and go to Gordon's Pond. Now back to scooter versus bicycle. Now, rough cut gravel, I've already experienced that. It's awful on a scooter. I don't recommend it at all, and it seems to cut the, it doubles the battery usage. Cuts distance in half when you're on gravel, maybe even more. This is finer gravel. This is nice. It's not bad at all. For me, I'm finding the scooter to be way more comfortable than a bicycle. Just being upright without being, without leaning forward. Leaning forward bothers my back. But I have my back injury, which you don't, so... 
but being upright just feels more natural and you're not constantly sitting but then again when you're hitting rough trails that those large wheels make it just much more comfortable unless you're good at not being flat-footed unlike me just practice standing on your tippy toes and with some time you'll just get the ability to do it again it's starting to happen with me I got the strength coming back into my calf muscles to hold me up now for this entire boardwalk I'm on tippy toes it's fine but without that it's gonna be horrible I'm gonna stop talking and let you enjoy this boardwalk. I love this boardwalk. It's my favorite place to go. Just listen to that sound. There's three of us. Yep. Now to our left is Gordon's Pond, and there'll, there'll be a lookout coming up soon. We'll take a look at that. Gordon's Pond. It smells sulky. Here's the lookout. Ooh, wheelchair accessible. Okay, I'm waiting in the shade. Okay, let's go up there. Okay, we're up here. Gordon's Pond. Quiet. That's a slow bike. Now we gotta pass all I don't think we're gonna be able to pass all of them. Alright. Uh, is that it? Looks like all of them have electric bikes. Alright, we're at the lookout. We're about four miles away from the campground. We have 0.7 mile to go to get to the beach access. The campground is north of this position. We are now in a parking lot at a state park in Delaware called Gordon's Pond Beach. I see the bike spot, I think. Well, that's a cool rig. 
Yeah, it it's, works better than can I, I thought. Can I the wagon though? Yeah, that's what everybody wants. I can make a big one, I guess, for grown-ups. I, I guess it's... She was about to ask about if it's electric, but I cut off the camera. <laughs> There's no way I'm pushing all this weight with my foot. This blue carpet is great. It's so easy to walk on the sand. They need to put these everywhere on the beach. I don't like sand. Okay. Sand. That's as far as I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna leave the family here and go another two miles south to the commercial land and see what that looks like. The city's over there. Let's go check it out. All right, we're almost there. We just need to get past these wall of hotels to the other side. Oh, look, ice cream. Ice cream, maybe. This is Rehoboth Beach Boardwalk. The wider part of this boardwalk is about 700 meters long. It appears to be quite commercial, shops everywhere. I decided not to bring the family to this location. We just need to stick around the state park, Cape Henlopen, and use the surrounding beaches and bike trails. On the way back, I saw a funny looking bird. It's a snowy egret. <laughs> of course, I have to show this again, but this time I'm going to go faster. We're going to take a shorter route back to the campsite to avoid the moshes. This route runs partially along the road. Here we are. This is a closed road that leads to the bunkers. You'll see them on the right. And it also leads to the campground, which will show up on the right. Mom just likes to go at a slower rate. All right, she's there, though. Where is her love? Great. Wait, what? I don't like hitting these bumps hard. And there's a bad one, I remember, that would flip you somewhere. Coming up. Ah, it hurts. Ugh. Here's a bunker on the right.
And here's another bunker on the right. There's a tent. Campsite's on the right. Another bunker. This is the way Chris would always go. Bunker. David. Those cabins you see look nice. They're rentable. We are back at the campsite. I'll make another one of these videos another day. This took five hours to edit.